I would be happy to, Frank, and I am just delighted to have this opportunity because, as you allude to, this is this is a subject that does not make it into America's living rooms and uh, parlors. It's not considered polite conversation for the most part, certainly by um, what might be considered mainstream media, which I would enlarge to include media from across the political spectrum, from left to right. And it certainly doesn't come into the conversation or debate of those among us who are actually charged with the responsibility of upholding the Constitution, and that would be our politicians, our political leaders, and so on. Um, But starting out with basics, um, just the basic eligibility as required by the Constitution for a president and vice president is quite simple. Um, It must be a natural-born citizen, 35 years of age, with 14 years residence, in these United States. And and let's pause there just for a moment because one of the key questions is uh, is there any doubt as to what is meant by the term natural born citizen? No, I don't think there is any doubt, although doubt has been cast upon the the phrase. Um, This has actually been discussed in our past, particularly in the 19th century. It came up quite uh, with some frequency. And the very famous case um, of Minor um, is usually cited as giving us our bellwether definition, which is a, a citizen born to two American citizens citizen parents. So it's not enough that they be born here. They have to be born here and of other citizens who have themselves been born here. Is that is that basically what it comes down to? That's what it comes down to. Of course, that is not a definition of, of all kinds of American citizenship. Obviously, we have citizens who were born in foreign countries who naturalize and so on. So there, this was a specific designation that was uh, much discussed uh, among the founders in order to eliminate any possibility of divided loyalties in the commander of America's armed forces. And uh, the idea was that if somebody was born to a parent with foreign loyalties, then that child would quite naturally have a divided sense of loyalty himself. Um, it, it certainly, it certainly was a sensible notion to my mind. But regardless of that, it was something that the founders believed was very important. Right. We've established in the Constitution a requirement, and as the courts have found, including in the case uh, minor. Uh, this has been further established in law. So does the President of the United States, Barack Obama, fit that definition, fit that constitutional requirement as best we can tell? No, no, quite by his own, his own, his own admission, his own um, life story as we know it. He obviously cannot fit that because his father was born a British subject in Kenya. And um, so, quite apart from where right the, he himself was born, quite apart from where this, he himself this other was born. natty detail, yes. which is not in dispute, as I can, as best I can tell, that his father was uh, not a U.S. citizen, natural-born U.S. citizen. Okay. So that's your basic constitutional question of eligibility. Um, this has come up in scores of cases in the last uh, four years or three years plus across the country. The reason, again, Diana West, that we're hearing uh, about these cases is that people in various walks of life in different locales have challenged the eligibility of the president on, on I guess, various grounds. But yet we, we almost exclusively have heard about this framed in terms of where he himself was born, which is, of course, a matter of some dispute. But there isn't really any dispute about his parents, is there? Right. There, there is no dispute about his parentage. The dispute comes in the reading of the natural born uh, clause in the Constitution, um, which would seem to have been settled law, uh, but it, it has not been so. And, and, and there have been tremendous polemicizing um, against the traditional reading of the natural born clause that we've seen in the last several years. Polemicizing uh, is a fancy and very charitable term <laughs> for for this. We'll we'll discuss in a moment uh, what what uh, this has actually entailed, including a lot of invective and uh, and hateful, uh, you know. Uh, suppression of, of, of people who've even raised the question. Uh, but, but finish your thought on this point about, um, about the natural-born 
law and uh, the president's ineligibility on its basis as established law settled it? Well, what we've seen is a, is a series of judicial cases where judges have actually declared President Obama to be natural born based on zero evidence or evidence that is very much contested. Uh, so it, it, the courts are not addressing themselves to the facts of the case, to the evidence that's being presented. And there is an interesting case coming up next week in Florida. Larry Clayman is representing uh, some citizen plaintiffs there. And he is presenting the case that the president must have two citizen parents as hearkening back to the case we, we mentioned earlier, Minor. And the judge in this case, Judge Terry Lewis, has already noted in discovery that while the plaintiff's attorney has has case law with his argument, the Obama attorneys have no case law. They have not cited any justification for their argument that the president is indeed natural born and qualified to be president. So that will be interesting to see what the Obama team brings to the table uh, next week. Yeah. Uh, you've written if it's covered. <laughs> if it's covered, it covered. Yeah, if it's covered at all, it will be covered, I'm quite sure, by you, Diana West. Let me, let me yes. just say, you, you've written a column just today about um, some of the past representations of the president's lawyers in cases like this, um, in which uh, even at the appellate court level, uh, and I guess for that matter the Supreme Court level, um, there's not really been an argument on the facts. Uh, there's simply been a contention that uh, this is somebody else's business, never mind. Nothing to see here, folks. Uh, keep keep moving along. Keep moving. <laughs> yeah. yes. and I, and We're back. Diana, before the break, we talked a bit about what the Constitution requires, and uh, you established under case law of um, many years standing, and that Larry Clayman is now, again, bringing to the fore in, in a court case in Florida, that there is this natty problem that uh, the law, the the meaning of the Constitution has been that his parents must also be naturally born American citizens, and that is not assuredly the case. On so many other points involved in this issue, however, um, for example, where the president himself was born, there seems to have been, uh, well, a lack of documentation, to say the least, to put it again charitably. What's going on with that? Well, this is where things get really fascinating, because we're looking at a great unsolved mystery. In fact, this is the greatest mystery, the greatest potential crime in all of American history, because what we are looking at is a president of the United States whose documentation has not been presented, vetted, corroborated, just given a straight story on to the American people. And and that is kind of as far as, as the story goes and as far as the story has to go in order to arouse every American's curiosity and every American's deep and abiding interest in, in seeing this to a conclusion that can prove Barack Obama to be exactly as he says he is or to prove some other story. We have no idea what it might be. And I think that's, I would like to preface my remarks in saying that having followed this uh, case as best as I can as a journalist, um, I do not know what, I do not even have a very strong theory as to what the documents may indeed tell us. I have various theories, but I, I am not wed to one, and I certainly don't see um, I certainly don't see a, a narrative that we can cling to um, that we should cling to in trying to solve the mystery. But the mystery must be solved, and it does begin with the fact that we have not seen any paper on our president, and that begins with the birth certificate, which one would think is the most innocent, inoffensive document a human being can have because you've absolutely done nothing wrong <laughs> and you have no, you have no points um, to, to fear uh, disclosing. But this was not released um, to the American public until we get to last year, and I think maybe we should start our story with April 27, 2011, when with great fanfare, the White House placed online an image of what is purported to be Barack Obama's complete 
what they call long-form birth certificate. Right, which had not been in play, despite many, many efforts to uh, uh, to elicit it from the administration, from the campaign, for and that matter. Money. And much money. And I, much money. I, as I recall, yes. it, this was in part in response to um, sort of the prodding or goading, if you will, that uh, Donald Trump had been engaged in, in a very, very high-profile way. So he rolls out the long form, and what do we know about it? Well, it was a very interesting moment because Donald Trump at that moment, if you can imagine, Donald Trump was actually the undeclared GOP frontrunner at that moment of, of April 2011. And frontrunner du jour, by, as it happens. Yes, and we also had a book at the top of Amazon, an unpublished book by Jerome Corsi called Where's the Birth Certificate? This was this was absolutely starting to suck in media attention as it had never had before. Voila! We get this online unveiling. Online, again, this weird kind of online unveiling. And I would like to um, just read one question from the presidential press conference, the White House press conference of that day, when a reporter said very, very sheepishly on being presented a copy of what was online, everyone was given out their own little copy, He said, and this is going to sound, I mean, you can just anticipate what people are going to remain unconvinced. They're going to say, this is just a photocopy, a piece of paper. You could have typed anything in there. Will the actual certificate be on display or viewable at any? And then he is drowned out by laughter. So the notion that actually someone should vet, touch, have somebody investigate the bona fides of this image was the subject of derision and laughter inside the White House press corps. And I think that really sets the stage for every development since. And they have come thickly since then. Well, let's, let's again visit at length about this suppression of the kind of obvious questions that arise, Diana West, um, in a moment. But, but just stay with getting, again, what we know or what we know we don't know, maybe, um, on the table. The um, the United States Senate, as I think you've pointed out, uh, affirmed formally that John McCain, who also had some people questioning his uh, bona fides in this department as, a, as an eligible um, presidential candidate during the last election cycle, uh, on the grounds that he had been born in the Panama Canal Zone, uh, albeit of two naturally born American citizens, to be sure. Uh, the Senate affirmed that. They didn't affirm Barack Obama's uh, eligibility. Did anybody remark on how peculiar that seemed? I'm sure people did remark on peculiar how peculiar that seemed, but it did not. It did not again bubble up into the level of any kind of serious national conversation. And maybe that's where we could we could say that the whole suppression began, because obviously this should have come onto the table early on at that point when two American senators were running for president, and we needed to see their bona fides. And frankly, a lot of the problem, a lot of the blame, initially goes to John McCain for not having made this a very frank, open, honest process by inviting his opponent, Senator Obama, then Senator Obama, to join him and essentially dump their paper out for the Senate to go through, which is essentially what John McCain did. He basically said, here, you deal with it. And they they went through it and found, uh, you know, that he was indeed eligible. And Barack Obama did not. Did not, and it didn't, it didn't, it already there was this notion of leaving him alone, of not examining, of not looking too closely, and it's only become more of an unhealthy psychosis, and at this point, I think it has completely corroded people's uh, logical processes, because we've come to a point, and this is why the whole issue is truly so important, we've come to a point where we are accepting the word of authority, rather than evaluating evidence. Yeah. Well, and, and, and Diana, be, before we have to take another break here momentarily, let me just quickly put on the table yet another factoid. Uh, it has been revealed recently by our friends at uh, the Breitbart Empire that Barack Obama's own agent promoting his first book did so for 16 years on their website, um, advertising that he was born in Kenya. 
and that yes. that was not changed, as I understand it, until he was uh, a month or two into the, um, the presidential race in 2007. What's up with that? Well, again, we, we, we can't definitively claim to know the answer. It, it's not, it's not asked. It's not the people who have entree to, uh, to the president at these, in, in the White House press corps don't ask the question. His colleagues in, in political circles don't make the point that this needs to be discussed and settled once and for all. But, it is but Diana, it, 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 yes. It, well, again, mm-hmm. we're going to come back to why that is, but. Welcome back. And Diana, one of the other things that, that also has come to my attention, and I can't remember where, but um, maybe you can re- recall for me, um, is that in the the campaign to become a United States senator, the issue arose as to the fact that he was not born in the United States, and he said something to the effect that, well, it doesn't matter, I'm not running for president. You don't have to have been <laughs> yeah. born in this country to be a senator. And that, at least implicitly, it would seem to me, suggests that the press agent about whom we spoke before actually had it right and was, of course, using the authorized explanation of where he was born. And, and you, you've addressed this, as has uh, Mark Stein, I think, recently in a terrific piece of his own. Again, What's going on here, Diana West? <laughs> well, there's, 